In this three-part series, we listen to St. Faustina describing her dark night of the soul when she experienced the spiritual trial of trials, where she journeyed from faith and consolation into doubt and despair with various temptations from Satan, then to feeling completely abandoned by Jesus, and finally attaining a higher level of spiritual closeness to God. In this third and final episode, Saint Faustina describes the new, higher level of spiritual closeness she attained following her dark night of the soul. She also explains the lessons she learned from the experience. We read from paragraph 103. Suddenly, I saw the Lord interiorly, and he said to me, Fear not, my daughter, I am with you. In that single moment, all the darkness and torments vanished. My senses were inundated with unspeakable joy, and the faculties of my soul filled with light. I want to add that although my soul was already in the rays of his love, traces of my past tortures remained on my body for two days, a deathly pale face and bloodshot eyes. Jesus alone knows what I suffered. What I have written is very poor compared to the reality. I cannot put it in words. It seemed to me that I had come back from the other world. I feel an aversion for everything that is created. I snuggle to the heart of God like a baby to its mother's breast. I see everything differently now. I am conscious of what the Lord, by one single word, has done in my soul, and I live by it. I shudder at the recollection of this past torture. I would not have believed that one could suffer so if I had not gone through it myself. This is a completely spiritual suffering. However, in all these sufferings and struggles, I was not omitting Holy Communion. When it seemed to me that I should not communicate, I went, before Holy Communion, to the directress and told her that I could not approach the sacrament, because it seemed to me that I should not do so. But she would not permit me to omit Holy Communion, so I went. And I understand now that it was only obedience that saved me. The directress herself told me later that my trials had passed quickly. And this was solely because you were obedient, sister. And it was through the power of obedience that you struggled through it so bravely. It is true that it was the Lord himself who brought me out of this torment. But my fidelity to obedience did please him. Though these are frightening things, the soul should not be too fearful, because God will never test us beyond what we are able to bear. On the other hand, he may never send us such sufferings. But I write this because, if it pleases the Lord to let a soul pass through such sufferings, it should not be afraid, but, in so far as this depends on the soul itself, it should remain faithful to God. God will do a soul no harm, because he is love itself, and in this unfathomable love has called it into being. However, when I was so tormented, I myself did not understand this. And in paragraph 109 we read, After such sufferings, the soul finds itself in a state of great purity of spirit and very close to God. But I should add that during these spiritual torments, it is close to God, but it is blind. The soul's vision is plunged into darkness, and though God is nearer than ever to the soul which is suffering, 
The whole secret consists in the fact that it knows nothing of this. The soul, in fact, declares that not only has God abandoned it, but it is the object of his hatred. How grave is the malady of the eyes of the soul which, struck by divine light, claims that there is no light, whereas it is so intense that it blinds her. Yet, despite all, I learnt later that God is closer to a soul at such moments than at others, because it would not be able to endure these trials with the help of ordinary grace alone. God's omnipotence and an extraordinary grace must be active here, for otherwise the soul would succumb at the first blow. And in paragraph 121 we read, There is a series of graces which God pours into a soul after these trials by fire. The soul enjoys intimate union with God, it has many visions, both corporeal and intellectual. It hears many supernatural words and sometimes distinct orders. But despite these graces, it is not self-sufficient. In fact, it is even less so as a result of God's graces because it is now open to many dangers and can easily fall prey to illusions it ought to ask God for a spiritual director, but not only must it pray for one, it must also make every effort to find a leader who is an expert in these things. Just as a military leader must know the ways along which he will lead his followers into battle, a soul that is united with God must be prepared for great and hard-fought battles. Jesus, I trust in you.